Now, a third wave of the COVID-19 pandemic is weighing on the Democratic Republic of Congo as the country explores options for a quicker economic recovery. So what is the government doing to speed up economic growth despite the COVID-19 vaccine hesitation witnessed since the rollout in March and a shortage of supply of vaccines? Now, joining me to discuss this is Nicolas Kazadi, the Finance Minister of the Democratic Republic of Congo. Minister Kazadi, thank you so much for your time. All right, so let's get right into it. If you can just speak to how your country is it's addressing the challenges around the COVID-19 pandemic. I do, as I wrote, reported earlier, you are experiencing a third wave right now. We saw the contraction in, in GDP last year. Now, many are forecasting a recovery, but can you just talk us through how that is working out for you this year? We are doing very well. We are above the average of the continent. Last year, we had 1.7% of GDP growth while the world continent had an average of minus 3.2. And this year, we are expecting a robust growth with 4.9% and 5.6% for next year. So it means that uh, we are uh, maintaining our recovery uh, trajectory. All right, Minister. On the COVID itself. Yes, yes go ahead. On the COVID, yes, on the COVID itself, the situation is, is also under control because uh, we have one, almost close to 100 million people in our country, but only 1,050 people dead and around 50,000 people infected so far since last year. It means that the situation is under control. The only problem we had, it was that people were reluctant to take the vaccine uh, last year. And now we have changed the situation completely. And we have uh, mobilized more than two 150 million US dollars and ordered over 28 million vaccines, among which Johnson & Johnson, AstraZeneca, Pfizer, and others. And now the rollout is increasing amongst, among all the hospitals in the country. So even that, in that direction, the situation is improving. Right, but Minister, the reports that we're hearing is that there is hesitancy with respect to the vaccinations, and that has slowed the the uptake aren't you concerned about that and how how do you hope to address that moving forward no the situation is changing completely as i told you told you the, the, the government is committed to ensure uh, massive deployment and awareness and we have put money for that we have started the campaign for awareness and uh, things are, are changing things are moving even though the situation in terms of uh, uh, impact in terms of death is not as dramatic as people would say, uh, but we are we are moving forward in terms of uh, vaccine. Right, but Minister, okay, so let's talk about that growth outlook that you spoke of. It would be very impressive if it, if, if it works out as you are suggesting, um, but we do know the history of your economy, very mining driven, but the private sector, uh, w we need to get a lot more investment into non-mining area. So how, how is that working out for you this year? Yes, yes, uh, absolutely. We have to diversify our economy and we are working hard to get it. But uh, even though we are we are still facing the, the, the COVID situation uh, worldwide, which has impact in our country in terms of the foreign investment, our plan is to diversify economy and to put an emphasis on the agriculture, agriculture, agricultural sector. But uh, as you know, uh, in the context of COVID uh, recovery strategy uh, at the world level, we will get some funding from the, the, the IMF, you know, the SDR, and some part of that funding will be put in a kind of investment fund uh, with the aim to diversify the economy. And this investment fund will be managed with the private sector and including the mining sector to have them committed to diversify the economy. Right. I was just going to get to your finances. You did just mention the IMF um, deal, and hopefully that would support that diversification, diversification strategy. But I do also have um, read of reports of support from the United States specifically, um, providing about $1.6 billion in financial support. Um, how are you hoping to deploy that? 
yes, that is uh, our relation with the uh, bilateral relation with the U.S. and we yeah, we, we are planning to we are, we are we are committed to a very strong co cooperation uh, strategic and strong cooperation with the U.S. Uh, you can know if you, it's good for you to know that we are also engage in the MCC Millennium Challenge Cooperation Process, uh, which is a U.S. Uh, U.S. important. The development initiative regarding the 1.6 billion. Uh, the, the priority sectors are education, health, uh, reduce, uh, uh, reducing conflict, energy, uh, which is linked to climate, and government reforms. All right. So thank you very much for that update. Um, but coming back to specific sectors that you're hoping to drive. Um, but if we can stay on the extractive sectors for a minute, mining. Um, how are you looking to progress with that moving forward? Uh, you have mentioned that you are looking to diversify the economy, but clearly you you won't be um, uh, you, you won't be avoiding trying to drive the mining sector as well. So I want to hear more about investment flows into that sector. No, we are no, we are we are we are progressing. We we come from a very uh, very difficult situation when we started with. Uh, the privatization, the privatization of our mining sector in the early 2000. Uh, but now we we have the, our second uh, uh, legal framework, which we call called Code Minier uh, for, for, for the sector. And we are doing our best to put more transparency in our sector. Uh, we have adopted the extractive and the ETA roadmap uh, on mining transparency, and we are we are committed to to create a beneficial ownership re registry, uh, the disclosure of all the mining contracts. We are doing uh, everything to have a more transparent sector, uh, because we know that if we want to attract good investors, we need more transparency, and that's what we are doing. And I can tell you that we have already started to see the result of our uh, of this change. Because now the, the sector is contributing more on the fiscal side of the economy. Can, can you be more but specific in terms of the contribution? You mentioned this contribution more. I imagine that's in the form of taxes and perhaps royalties. Yes. Uh, can, you, can, you, can, you, can you tell us how that has changed, for example, over the last year? If you can be more specific. No, the, 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 the most important fiscal uh, payers uh, in our economy are on the mining sector. Yes, I, obvious. Yeah. yes I understand that, but I, you mentioned that you are seeing more growth in that area. So I just wanted to get a little more, if you can be more specific in terms of the growth level. No, it was not easy at all. We had a lot of conflict between the state and the mining sector regarding uh, tax and what they were paying in terms of tax. But now we are, uh, the, situation, the situation is getting more, more transparent and clear and they are more willing to pay what they have to pay. Uh, and I can tell you that we have increased our revenue uh, this year uh, by 30% compared to 19, uh, 2019. No, for, yes, compared to 2019. That means that uh, we are in a good, in a good, uh, good path. All right, Minister, I have to take a brief commercial break, but I'll come back to you in a moment. When we come back, we'll continue our conversation with the Finance Minister of the DRC, Nicolas Kazadi.